The topic of my presentation is uh, human biomechanics. It's a very big topic. Uh, it's too big for a 20 minute for a presentation. Uh, that is why I'll be very brief and tell you just the basics. And I will explain the biomechanics that may be used for actually the patient's biomechanics is a fundamental science that studies the mechanical properties of uh, uh, tissues, organs, and the body in general. And it's done from the point of view of the laws of mechanics, since we are a mechanical system as well, I mean, human beings. Uh, but even in uh, medical biomechanics, uh, it's a huge fundamental science, and it, uh, there's engineering towards biomechanics. Now, medical biomechanics is a part of it, but a big part, and it has both the theoretic and the clinical part. Theory is biomechanics of bone tissue, of cardiovascular system, of a system of breathing, of a cell, etc. Uh, besides, uh, there are clinical applications, and uh, uh, already food, and among the clinical ones, the most important uh, part, which is why they used uh, in uh, modern medicine, is the clinical analysis of functional movements. Uh, and this uh, consists of several subdivisions that you see. At the bottom, that is the analysis of gait. Since walking is an uh, ancient uh, locomotion, uh, the whole locomotive system participates um, in it, so it's easy and convenient to uh, use it as uh, the uniform motion test uh, to study the potential abilities of the uh, patient. Of course, the one that is able to move independently, even with some artificial uh, supports. Uh, the analysis of posture, that's balance that is made in the study of the balance of vertical posture and there's a big class of different motion tests that may be called analysis of non-specific uh, cyclic movement. Why are they cyclic? Because repeating is uh, very important to study uh, motion and uh, its mechanics. So it's important that it's cyclic. And uh, uh, there's a segment, the joint, or some other part where the function will take place is not that important. Standardization is not important. Uh, biomechanics as a science was founded not yesterday, not the day before yesterday. If you trace uh, history, well, again, again, in one slide, I won't be able to uh, give you a complete uh, history of this science. But um, the, the first studies were uh, conducted here by Hippocrates. Uh, they exist. Uh, the studies of uh, joints. Aristoteles did it. Uh, so did Leonardo uh, da Vinci. I skipped a lot of time. And Leonardo da Vinci made a lot of uh, uh, that. And his discoveries are still being used for the analysis of motion. Our uh, compatriot, uh, Mr. Bernstein, uh, made the theory of uh, forming of motion. American Werner Eman uh, made uh, some conclusions on the um, and uh, he used the clinical analysis of motion for in practice. Uh, and at the bottom, there's a number of uh, different uh, scientists. Some already passed away. As for the international scientific uh, cooperation, and uh, community, uh, the most uh, interesting for us is the European community of analysis of uh, uh, children and adults. Uh, uh, analysis. So they're meeting two places in Glasgow recently. Uh, there's this uh, society of clinical analysis of uh, 
Front End Gate. It's uh, American, the International Society of Biomechanics, the Board of Engineers and Doctors, and the International Pathology uh, Society, Portugate uh, Research. Uh, but they deal with everything, not just uh, uh, what is mentioned, everything related to motions. I'd like to show this slide uh, from the site of that. Uh, um, ISPGR, so that we understand where we are. So that's the slide where the members of that society live. Things are quite clear. Yeah, you see where uh, this field is well known, it's more widely used, and where it is not so uh, popular. From the point of view of the mechanical system, how a body consists of uh, big leverages, uh, long tubular bones. Uh, there are more comprehensive leverages, like, for example, the spine, which is a very comprehensive system in itself, with uh, many multiple uh, leverages of the first and second order. In biomechanics, uh, they are uh, presented uh, with uh, arrows. Uh, every joint uh, has its own uh, system of coordinates. Uh, a bit later I'll explain why it's so important. The main methods are uh, the registration of uh, motion. If we study the motions of a uh, healthy and uh, sick uh, human, the main methods used for uh, these studies is the registration of uh, the cinematics of movement, uh, time parameters, since uh, motion has the time parameter as well. It happens in time and in space. So there are spatial parameters as well. And certainly, of course, is used so dynamic parameters, important uh, uh, electromyogram, it's the functional one, and it's not quite a mechanical parameter, that's that uh, internal structure of movement that uh, explains how the drives of the movement are being used. Uh, uh, sometimes unexpected muscles are the real drivers, I will give you those examples of them. But anyway, muscles are involved, and stabilometry. That's um, the uh, study of the body balance. It's frequently used for standing. Patients those who are able to stand and at present there are methods that uh, enable us to conduct stabilometry for any patient, even the one who is not able to stand independently yet. For the study, the standard study of uh, cinematics, so we do the video registration. On the, this slide you see quite a typical uh, lab analysis of motion. It's quite a big room with plenty of cameras installed at different angles uh, along the perimeter where many cameras are necessary. There are uh, light reflectant markers, sometimes uh, uh, luminous uh, markers. Uh, LEDs on the patient's body and for registration of that marker in space, uh, two or three cameras should be able uh, to register it simultaneously. And sometimes patients turn around and uh, we need, in fact, we need many more markers and cameras. This is the result of uh, video registration. It is presented on the monitor. That's the result of the uh, study of the <coughs> person's walking or gait. And that's our patient. We've uh, made a photograph with flash so that you can see the markers very well. Uh, these are not LEDs, these are light reflectant uh, markers. Then we make the model of the patient. At the top, uh, you see the cameras that we use for registration. This is the post-insult, post-stroke patient. It's performing some movements, uh, balance movements. These are, uh, this is a set of exercises that uh, we use for post-stroke patients. Uh, this is the healthy side, the side that uh, 
uh, survived the insult, uh, the hand and the leg go forward, and right away we found out that the leg only moved after the hand. So the lower limb movement depends on the upper limb. See what happens next again. But the leg will finish uh, the movement earlier. This is normal. And this side, the other side, is the one that had paralysis. See, the body is strongly declined. Why that? It's the attempt to lift the upper limb with the support of the body. See? This kind of a push. The lower limb is the exterior rotator. So it's not a perfect way, but uh, using different resources, the, patients, the patient managed to do the exercise. Paracis didn't let him lift the upper lift, so he did it with the muscles of uh, the body, not of the limb. And then he's coming into the initial position, but in actually, actually it's a fall. Also, uh, his body turned uh, in space, rotated. This is video recording. But uh, uh, what we see in uh, such uh, records, we only see some 10% of what really happens. Uh, that's the way our eyesight works. Uh, though cinematic motion is, uh, seems to be obvious, uh, we do not see every detail of it with uh, our eyesight only. There are other ways of registration that exist. Uh, this is the so-called inertial uh, sensor that does the registration without any video cameras or markers. And it registers the motion of the sensor in space. It may also be used for registration of walking. Yeah, the patient went out of the video camera registration zone, but still it continues. Um, you can make the registration of upper limbs motion. The video analysis is being uh, used a lot, and there are also inertia sensors, and there's ultrasound registration of motion. Now the spine movements, of course, we can only register big segments, uh, that uh, is uh, the lumbar, the thorax uh, uh, part and the neck part of uh, the spine, and uh, you can have a 3D registration. Don't pay attention to the upper limbs, there are no sensors there. And, uh, do we actually miss that's the registration of this very patient? He has a cerebral paralysis, cerebral palsy. I give an example of him very uh, often because it's a very typical example from the point of view of orthopedists. Well, we shouldn't claim him too much. Uh, with them, they did it on the level of knowledge and information that they obtained. So the patient was, uh, has had a surgery uh, for instability of uh, joints after the surgery of uh, Achilles. Uh, joints, and though uh, the position of both feet was uh, corrected, uh, there were, it didn't improve his walking. So, uh, before the operation, we managed to study this uh, uh, patient. This is the hip movement, the hip joint movement, bending and uh, rotation. Same uh, with the knee and the ankle uh, joint. Uh, thin line is standard. Thick line is the movement of the actual patient. You can observe hyperfunction of the hip joint. 
It's quite a frequent uh, uh, event at spastic diplegia, and this is the knee joint. Uh, its movement is less than normal. This is the other side, same thing. The ankle joint movement is less than uh, uh, the ROM range of motion is smaller than standard. So, the diagnosis wasn't uh, proved. Actually, the joints are just slightly stiff, and uh, spastic muscles remained spastic. Uh, thus, the ROM is less than it could be. The situation is uh, opposite to the diagnosis made. What was the actual problem? The actual problem is here. Have a look. The knee joint. Its motion <coughs> is actually absent. See the thick lines. It's nearly motionless. Passive movements are okay, but active the normal mechanics of management of motion when walking is faulty. And actually, this uh, leg is like a, working like a crutch. The hip uh, joint, its function is uh, bad. So the hip uh, on the other side compensates it. That's good. The operative uh, treatment was cancelled. We conducted conservative procedures uh, with the use of uh, loading suits, but this is a separate story. This is not the DC in the look at this loading suits uh, application. This is uh, another patient of the stroke. Look how he is walking. Rhythmically, symmetrically, yes, small steps. Walking slow, but nothing crucial, nothing critical. This is his movements in uh, uh, hip joints and hip joints. You've seen what is a normal, uh, and what is, what is a normal hip joint. There were some changes, but not that expressed in both cases. The only thing that may worry is the excessive bending. Here, which very often happens when the changes of the enjoy does drastically change. But here is a very mild form. And now this is uh, the use of the Yeah, so called amplitude phasal analysis. 
and their step cycle consists of two big periods, their supposed period, 62% of the cycle, and the period of the full transfer. And we have two additional uh, periods, double support, when both feet are moved. And the most difficult stage is the transfer period, when only one uh, extremity, one foot, is based on the floor. In known the double support periods are symmetrical around 12% of the step cycle. And as you understand, this single support has to be uh, one foot has to be the same as when you have a foot, very symmetrical cycle. And the start of the second uh, double support uh, comes close uh, in the middle of the cycle. Exactly. Their contact and the senses on the foot stand in the position like this. Uh, first in the
uh, uh, the one is the it goes from plus to minus and the lateral one which is a balancing component the green one it can be even if the patient has certain problems with balance during one of the examples of what may happen the vertical component is twice as large as big as the weight of the body in ordinary walking and the minimum that comes on to the period of single support is 70 to 80 percent of the body weight but here up to 100% of the body weight, this line is 100%. But here the dynamic uh, supportability uh, does not reach 100%, which means that the extremity cannot bear the weight of the body. On the right side, you see a different picture. The patient not only needs additional support, but he will have to use uh, when I examined quite young patients, physically in quite good uh, condition, but in the result of different pathological processes, they were losing their dynamical uh, supportability quite significantly. But when people are young, this may be compensated quite easily. And very often they've been uh, discharged to work with we, which means that we know very little about it. Functional EMG, an electromyogram, is conducted with a special myographer. We register not the myogram that uh, we receive usually uh, in the research. This is a superficial myogram of muscles in motion. We look how this muscle is included into the motion cycle. This is just an example, a testing option. The patient may run or generate some other uh, actions. Though certainly, usually our patients do not run. And this is the patient with spastic diplegia of the cerebral palsy, a teenager. And the question raised here was about the efficacy of the operative surgical intervention to be used. Without going into detail, I just want to show you. This is a biceps femoris. That's the profile of electric activity in the step cycle in no. The blue line shows what the patient said, where the muscle has to be silent, it is vice versa working. The basal bioelectric activity has been changed, and if we do not detect this, we can work with this uh, muscle massage uh, physiotherapy and we shall make the mus muscle that is working anomaly uh, stronger. And the result will be quite negative since we do not have this characteristic. You know that the medical doctor can diagnose only the disease that he or she knows. So they'll find the reason for this in something else. Tremor. Another fundamental characteristics, you see how it may be registered in three planes simultaneously, the functional uh, probe uh, contracting the hand, you see not only the increase of the amplitude, but also the frequency changes, uh, grown up adult male has 12 to 14 hertz, or 12 to 14 times a second, while this, uh, we do not see it visually, high frequency uh, amplitudes cannot be seen. This is an example of the pain syndrome in the lumbar region. That's the this is a 
protective uh, response of the muscles when the pain uh, is evident. Stabilometry, the method that as of today has been uh, used quite uh, often in the clinical practice, quite uh, doesn't require any special equipment uh, on the patient, provides very good uh, result, is very sensitive, and this is a clinical example. What I want to draw your attention to one of the main characteristics that we have received in stabilogram is the position of the gravity center of the body uh, onto the platform depending on where the feet of the patients are located. This is one and the same patient uh, before the therapy and after the therapy. At the end of the therapy, which lasted for 30 days in the hospital, the doctors were satisfied, the patient was satisfied, 